Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your GIS News for Friday, September 13, 2024. Jamaica is working to strengthen air travel out of the Latin American region to tap into an economic area where there is a growing middle class with the ability to travel and consume tourism experiences. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett points out that South America's largest airline, LATAM, will begin flying out of Lima, Peru, to Montego Bay starting December 1. In addition, the tourism team is in consultation with Azul Airlines in Brazil and Avianca in Colombia. We can see South America becoming, you know, a strong player in, in line with um, Canada and the UK um, as, as drivers of, of large numbers into Jamaica. What we are focused on or aiming for is by the end of 2025 to have a, a full slate of airlift connectivity. Um, between Latin America and Jamaica for both Montego Bay and Kingston, um, feeding both the leisure as well as the business um, opportunity that exists between the two regions. The Minister and Director of Tourism were speaking at a recent GIS think tank. In the meantime, this year's Observance of Tourism Awareness Week will focus on how the sector thrives on and can help support peace in the society. The week will be observed from September 22 to 28 under the theme, Tourism and Peace, out of many, one love. A stable and peaceful environment is an indispensable prerequisite for tourism's success. However, the relationship is reciprocal. Tourism itself can serve as a catalyst for peace by fostering the free flow of people, ideas, and resources across borders. It can nurture a global community built on mutual respect and understanding. Tourism Awareness Week activities begin on September 22 with a church service at the Family Church on the Rock in Montego Bay. On Monday, September 23, there will be an unveiling of a mural at Peters Lane in downtown Kingston. A speaking series and storytelling competitions are planned for the Tourism Action Club in schools across the island. This will run from September 23 to 26. On the 25th, a youth forum is planned for the Montego Bay Convention Center, and on the 26th, the Falmouth Artisan Village will house an event dubbed Save a Jamaica, featuring a display of Jamaica's rich culinary heritage. And on Friday, September 27, World Tourism Day, a free One Love concert will be held at Devon House. Work on the construction of an infant nursery for incarcerated expectant mothers who give birth while in custody is nearing completion. Construction is approximately 98% complete and the nursery is projected to be opened in mid-September. The facility is being developed at the South Camp Adult Correctional Center in Kingston at a cost of $13 million. National Security State Minister Juliet Cuthbert Flynn tells GIS News that the need for a nursery was identified during a visit to the facility. I decided that we should have a nursery for these mothers and when I investigated, uh, we recognized that there were at least two mothers a year who would enter the facilities pregnant and give birth while they are incarcerated, um, whether if they're waiting to be charged or not. But they end up being in the in, in state's care mm -hmm. and end up giving birth. Mrs. Cuthbert Flynn says the nursery, which will accommodate up to three mothers at a time, will be outfitted with amenities such as cribs, changing tables, diaper pails, beds for the mothers, and rocking chairs to encourage breastfeeding. She expresses optimism that the nursery will be a game changer by keeping mother and child in a safe space and that it will help to reduce the 40% recidivism rate. The policy for the government is for the mother to keep a child in um, while incarcerated for at least six months and so why not have a nursery to make sure that um, if we're going to keep the baby for six months that they are properly cared for and that the mother can have the best mental health care and um, for that infant in a safe in a safer space. General Manager of the Heart NSTA Trust, Dr. Tanisha Ingleton, says assessments and lessons learned from the World Skills Competition in Lyon, France, will be used to enhance its TVET programs. Dr. Ingleton was speaking on Wednesday during a panel discussion. We upgrade our curriculum, we integrate the standards into the learning. We have individuals here who are experts 
we place those experts into the teaching system. We have individuals here who are marking. We meet with them, assess what is it that you're seeing? What is it that you're observing? What do we need to tweak? How do we need to make changes and reimagine so that we can become better at what we do? Dr. Ingleton says the Jamaican team at the event is serious about reaping the gains from the international competition to advance the country's skills agenda. The goal, she says, is to advance competences in particular skilled areas and educate the country and region about how it is that we can future-proof the economy with skills. So when we go back, we write the learnings from this competition into our planning framework exactly how it is that we're going to be managing and operating our TBET institutions right across the year with the learnings coming from here. The Jamaican team is among 1,400 young people competing in 59 skill areas, showcasing their talent and fostering international collaboration. The Manchester Health Department is reporting that the Prattville Health Center has been closed for repairs. Repairs are scheduled to be completed for full restoration of services in October. In the meantime, residents of Prattville, Asia and surrounding communities in South Manchester are encouraged to use the Newport and Cross Key Health Centers or other nearby facilities. Persons can contact the Manchester Health Department at 876-613-1543 or 876-613-5895 for further information. And finally, multi-Olympic champion Shelly-Ann Fraser-Price is to be presented with the keys to the city of Kingston. This presentation is the highest honor that can be bestowed by the Kingston and St. Andrew Municipal Corporation and is being conferred on Mrs. Fraser-Price in recognition of her sterling and iconic career in athletics over the years. The decision was announced at the KSAMC's council meeting on Tuesday. She is proud and strong Jamaican woman who has made our country's name shine on the global stage. And I just want to indicate also that at the next council of meeting, of, of, of our meeting, we will be moving also a resolution for a road in her community to be renamed after Shelley and Fraser Price. Councillor for the Hagley Park Division, Waynette Strayan, who moved the resolution, says Shelley Ann Fraser Price has exceeded the boundaries of sport to become one of Jamaica's cultural ambassadors. And that's it for JIS News today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.